Hi, I'm John Schneider with Fargo 3D Printing here at CES 2016, and I'm here in the MCOR booth talking with Deirdre, and we're going to talk a little bit about the new printer that you're unveiling here at CES. Good, good morning. How are morning. you? Good. Well, thank you for coming to our booth. We're very excited. At CES yesterday, we launched the MCOR Arc. Before I talk about that, I'll just talk a bit about MCOR. MCOR is known for um, their full-color 3D printers, industrial 3D printers, the MCOR Iris. Uh, and we've been selling that for a number of years. So what we've done with the Iris is, we've made it new and improved and shrunk it down, and it's now the Emperor Arc desktop, the first full color desktop 3D printer. Um, what we have here is an integrated inkjet head, which gives us very high quality color. Uh, we've also got, the machine works with a roll of paper, so the paper is fed in here on the left hand side and drawn across. The advantages to that is that it gives us super reliability, it also gives us an adaptive build, which actually increases the speed of the machine and also um, decreases the waste on every part you build. Um, we also have some new features here. We actually cut every profile with a blade and we also apply a um, water-based adhesive on each layer. So we have a new Theta head with actually a, where we apply the adhesive, which actually does contours and actually gives, gives us a, an ability to actually print more complicated parts. Yeah. Um, what else can I tell you? We're fully IoT, so uh, you don't have to be connected to laptop or computer. There's a USB port here, internet, Wi-Fi enabled. Um, other nice little features is we have a progress bar here in the front, which shows you where you are on your build. So if you're the other side of the room, you can glance over and know if it needs attention or if it's finished. You can take it out here, the build comes out here. Also touchscreen here enabled as well, so everything can be done right here on the front. We also have a mobile app, which help, help, you know, also helps you kind of control your machines. If you have a few machines, you can actually keep an eye on what, what's going on in each machine. And is the, uh, is the app available or on display here at the booth as well? It is actually right okay. over here. Okay. Yeah. So I think after this, then we'll get some footage of that. Sure. Just yeah, taking no a look at how that's working. Uh, the other nice thing about this machine is, you know, we talk in 3D printing about customization. Right. And when you look around, all the printers look pretty much the same. So we felt like, let's do something different. So with this printer, you can actually choose your skin. So if you want to have a wood-like finish, on the display here is a carbon fiber or a brush steel. So there's different options to suit your style. So uh, you might have said this already, but build, build volume, build capacity uh, of this printer? Yeah, sure. It's about six liters. About six liters. Yeah. OK. Uh, so the way. The way that it ends up making these parts, they're very, are they strong parts, brittle yes. parts? Very strong. People are always surprised, you know, you say print, uh, paper. Right. Paper is an amazing material. So uh, when you layer the paper together, it feels a lot more like wood. And when you finish, it can feel anything like plastic. Or uh, we, can, we have lots of different finishes where you can actually make the parts flexible. So there's lots of options. Are there any limitations for this printer? What types of things are the, uh, the this printer maybe not the best for? Well, one of the markets we see as really suited to is creative professional markets. So anyone designing that needs color, color is obviously a big part, are, a big part of what right. we're doing here. So any any market that needs color, that's where we're actually focusing on. But the part, the printer can print now, as I said, with it with some of the new features here. You know, more complicated parts. So even in the medical, we have some med nice medical applications for maxillofacial reconstruction or plastic surgery. So we we, we do kind of. Across, things across the board here. Uh, even forensics is another kind of area that's quite interesting, actually. So can you go into the post-processing of this a little bit more? So people are very familiar now with FDM-style printing, where it's the filament extrusion. Right. Even SLA, they're starting to become more familiar with that. Yes. Paper, I don't think there's as much familiarity with how sure. that is finished. Sure, sure. Actually, as the part's been printed on the machine, it's been partially weeded. So what, we, what that means is the, the, the waste has been removed almost in the process as well. But then when, you, when the part comes out at the end, you do need to decube and remove any remaining support material. So that has to be done at the end also. Um, and then there is a dipping process. So to make the color actually more vibrant, we actually dip the parts in a, in a water-based resin so that we get the really vibrant full color. Uh, let's see, one more question is on the cost of running this machine. Sure. So material cost, uh, how does it compare to other types of 3D printing processes? It's probably one-fifth the cost. Okay. Wow. So yeah, it's, wow. a, it's a very inexpensive pr printer to run because it is only paper uh, and everything else collectively, even though we, we might say like the ink, but the ink we're using very small amounts of ink on each layer. So as I said, most of the parts in the cabinet are probably under 20 bucks to print, you know, so it's, like, it's, it's a low cost machine. 
So I guess uh, while we're talking about cost, what is the, if someone was looking for a turnkey system to get up and running, sure. get up and printing very quickly, yes. what sort of price are we looking for the system and what's the timeline? Uh, how soon is this going to be released? Is it already released? Sure. We, we launched this printer yesterday and it will be released sometime, probably March of this year. Okay. Um, the price point, I'm glad to say, is eight nine nine five dollars okay. 5995 sterling. And we feel that at this price point, we can address a much broader audience and leapfrog desktop printing much, you know, much further down the line, whereby you know more people are going to be using it, and they're going to get, you know, reliable professional parts. Right. All right. Well, very cool. I want to thank you for your time, talking to me about the Arc, and telling me a little bit more about Mcore. So, thanks again. All right. Thank you very much. No worries much. at all.